Are you feeling overwhelmed, tired, or stressed out? If you are, this is the video for you. I have personally been very stressed out lately. I've been very, just a lot of things on my plate with pregnancy and work and business and family and all of the things, and it's been a lot. So I've had to take my own advice and really put some systems in place to help me not be overwhelmed and not be stressed. So if you're struggling with stress, if you're f struggling with being overwhelmed, this is the video for you. Stay tuned. I have five tips that are really actionable and practical tips that you can do to just take a step back and come up with a game plan on how to deal with it and how to assess your stress and how to come out ahead. Jumping right in, number one is make a list of what you would like to get done and what needs to get done. I don't know about you, but I get very overwhelmed when I'm thinking of all the stuff that I have to do or going on a trip or whatever it is. And I have this list up in my head and I'm like, I have to do this, 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 and this. And it just feels like a mile long. It feels like something that I'm never going to be able to finish. I'm going to forget things. And it just is overwhelming and stressful. What I do at that time is I make a list. And I'm like, all right, this is what I, or actually two lists. I make a list of what I would like to get done, and what I need to get done. And then when I have it all in on paper, just kind of brain dump it all out, I'm like, all right, you know what? This is attainable. I can physically check things off. I can physically see what I need to get done versus having to make sure I don't forget things. Because that's something I'm totally guilty of is I get more stressed about forgetting something than I do about the actual project itself or the actual thing that I'm overwhelmed about. So create a list of all the stuff that you'd like to get done, all the stuff that you need to get done so you can visually see it out in front of you. Next is you're going to assign those tasks out throughout the week. So set two to five tasks per day off of that list and say, okay, I'm not getting down all 20 of these today. I'm going to put two to five tasks on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, so that it's not as overwhelming and it's spaced throughout the week and I can get it done. Or if you have a specific period of time until the event or until you have to get these done, space them out, figure out a timeline of how long you have and what tasks need to be done in what order in a way that you can practically manage it. Because if you have a to-do list for your day of 20 tasks, it's going to be so overwhelming. You're not going to get them done. And then you're going to feel guilty for not getting them done when realistically, it wasn't possible for you to get them done in the first place. So have a realistic number of tasks assigned for the day. If you get more done, that's great. But if not, that's okay. And if you only get those two tasks done that you said, hey, these are top priority, these other three are not top priority, but I like to get them done, then that's awesome. Say you complete four, that's great. So that way you know, okay, these are the must-haves, these are the likes. Number two is to take care of yourself. I recently saw this post, I'm going to put the image up on Instagram, and it hit me hard. And it really was like, holy crap, this is what's going on in my life right now. And it's talking about when you take care of yourself versus when you don't take care of yourself and a stressful event happens of how long it takes to get through that stress. When you're taking care of yourself, it only lasts a little bit of time, a couple hours, 30 minutes, whatever it may be. But when you are not taking care of yourself and you are stressed to the mask, it's going to lead through the whole entire day and possibly multiple days because of just your stress level and you're not taking care of your body. So it's so important to take time for self-care. It's so important just to take time for yourself, especially, especially if you're an introvert. I know that I am a huge intro. You would never know like with me being on YouTube, but surprisingly, a lot of YouTubers are introverts and we need that time by ourselves, even without my husband of just being able to recharge. And that is a great way that I am able to just recharge, refresh and be able to move throughout the day or when those stressful times come of taking care of myself and being able to manage through it and process it. I went from being a workaholic, especially in my business, working 40 hours a week in my business on top of my full-time job of 40 hours. And then I got pregnant and I was so sick my first trimester. I went from a workaholic to nothing, like all everything to zero. And I felt guilty. I felt worse for not doing things because I was such a workaholic before and that wasn't healthy. And so you need to take care of yourself and you need to prioritize doing whatever self-care looks like for you, whether it's being alone for a little bit, watching a show, 
like a funny show like Friends or something like that. Sometimes it's just scrolling through TikTok and laughing or reading a book or taking a bath or going for a walk or having lunch with a friend and just decompressing and just having a laugh and having fun, going to the beach, doing whatever it is that is best for you. Having that self-care is so, so important in helping you manage that stress for when that stress comes, you're ready to take it on and you can handle it. Because if you're not ready to take it on, it's going to hit you 10 times harder than if you were ready. Self-care, relationships, and community are so important for recharging. And it's amazing that I know that I struggled with this a lot. And a lot of my friends that I've talked to and other YouTubers that I've talked to is it was really hard going through COVID and not having that same community as we used to have. And we're made for a community. We're made to have that friendship and have the laughs and have the people that we can go to and call and say, hey, I just need to talk this through or this is what I'm going through. Or, this is a really exciting time in my life. This is a huge promotion that I got or this is something that a really big milestone that I hit in my life and I'm so proud of myself and I wanna share that with you. And when we don't have that community, it drains us. It's hard and it's amazing how much our bodies and our souls and our minds were made for community. So make sure that you make that a priority, even when you're in the hustle season. I really regret when I was first building my business that I didn't prioritize community and my friends. And a lot of our friendships kind of just faded away. We didn't have a falling out or anything like that, but it was just a, oh, she doesn't call me anymore. They don't call us. And then next thing you know, it's been like two years and we've, we haven't talked to that couple in forever or they were in our wedding party and then we weren't even invited to their wedding just because time got away from us and that community was lost so really really prioritize community especially when you're in the weeds especially when you're paying off debt or especially when you're building a business because it's so easy to put that first and make that your only priority but you need to make it a priority, but also have the priority of community as well. Next, focus on what's going to help you build your business or what's going to help you make more money or what's going to help you whatever your big goal that you're working on in your life, whether it's debt payoff or making money or growing a business, what's going to help you get to that point? So for instance, with me and my business, my business makes money through creating content and I get paid through ads or through courses or through products. And that's how I get paid. So me creating new products leads to more income. Me replying to YouTube comments doesn't, doesn't grow my income at all. It's great for building the community. It's great for connecting with you guys. But if I only have a certain amount of time that I need to get working in my business or I only have one hour a day, I need to be like, all right, what am I doing for that one hour today? I need to do something that's gonna grow my income in my business. I can use those other tasks and downtime. I can reply to comments while I'm watching TV. I can reply to comments while I'm in the grocery store line waiting for a checkout. There's other things that I can be doing during those down hours, but if we're in a power hour or we have three hours to work in our business or five hours, focus on the things that are gonna help you to grow, help you to reach your goal, whatever your goal is, and make that a priority and really sit down and evaluate those tasks and say, is this pushing me forward towards my goals? Yes or no? No? Okay. That needs to take the back burner. Yes? Okay. That's what we're doing right now. Next is to have an accountability buddy. Have someone that you are able to be accountable for and or be accountable to and say, hey, these are the tasks that I'm getting done today. Here's what I'm going through. Or hey, this is what... I need accountability on. I need to have this done by this deadline. I have one month to get it done. Can you help keep me accountable? And they're like, yes, we got this. Can you help keep me accountable in this area? Yes, we got this. And just having that accountability is so important because I don't know about you, but I am very accountable to others, but I'm not always accountable to myself. I'll put myself last. I'll put my own personal goals last and I will make, if I commit something to someone else, I'll make sure that gets done. But if I commit it to myself, not always gets done. So having that accountability really helps you to make sure that you get it done. And also sometimes just someone that you can be like, hey, this sucks, like this is hard. I don't wanna do this. And they're like, you know what? I've been there, it does suck, I'm doing it too. But we're gonna do it and we're gonna get through it together and you're gonna feel so much better after you've finished. 
So having that accountability is so important. I personally love the app Marco Polo, and I'll have it linked for you guys down below in the description if you want to check it out. But it's a great app where you can video talk back and forth or, or sound talk back and forth. And it's a really great way just to stay connected. There's a lot of other creators that I am friends with on Marco Polo that we connect throughout the day or throughout the week. I just love it. It's such a great way of accountability. To me, I like it more than texting and it's more convenient than picking up the phone, but it's a really great way to have that accountability. So if you're looking for a great communication tool, I suggest Marco Polo and you can be used for accountability or friends or family or whatever it is, but it's a really cool app. So definitely check it out. Next is to set micro goals that are more attainable. I know that I get very overwhelmed when I have a Mount Everest of a project and I'm like, holy cow, like this is such a big project. I have to do this whole big thing. Like I remember when I first was creating a course and my first course that I ever created took me over four, over two years to finally launch the course. And it just felt like Mount Everest to me. And then what I was like, you know what? We're going to break this down. We're going to set micro goals to create the course. Okay, so what do I have to do to create the course? I have to do an outline. I have to create the create the content. I have to edit the content. I have to create a sales page. I have to create a lead magnet. I have to create an email funnel. I need to market it. These are the things that I have to do. When I set those individual tasks, I'm like, you know what? All right, we're checking things off. We're getting things done. And it seems a lot more attainable and you can do it in actionable steps versus just, this is a huge project. How am I going to get this done? So set those as small attainable goals that you can get done. And this works for business. This works for personal. This works for your day job, whatever it may be. We're even cleaning the house. If you say, I have to clean my house this weekend. Holy cow. I got the kitchen. I got the bedrooms. I got the bathroom. I've got all this stuff. And you're like, all right. This is how I do it. I'm like, all right, we're doing the dishes. Okay, we're cleaning off the counters. Okay, we're doing the floors. Okay, we're cleaning the toilets. Okay, we're doing all these individual things. And then I'm like, check, 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 check. And it makes me feel a lot more accomplished than clean the house. Okay, I don't even know where to start. So having those attainable goals that you can create and check them off. And then you also get that accomplishment when you do. If you are looking to a list and you see check, 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 or cross, 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 it makes you feel excited and all right, we can do this and we're gonna push through. Let's keep the conversation going. If you wanna know how I make money online, how I grow my online businesses, check out this video here. And if you wanna know five simple habits for a more productive life, check out this video here. Hey.